Hello, my name is Nathalie Lesage, your host here at Faithful Living Home. Thank you for tuning in. Tonight is part two of our topic this week is recreational Christianity. Hmm. I heard the expression uh, the other day and it really kind of lit me up a little bit in my mind and I thought, hmm, this is a really good topic to talk about. So a couple of days ago, I asked you a couple of questions in part one, and I'll link that below in the description uh, so that you can find it easily. So the two questions I asked were, do you know what recreational Christianity is? And can you say without hesitation that Yahweh, God, is first in your life? I ask those questions because in the days that we currently live in, I now understand why it is so important and critical, like critical, um, to put Yahweh God first in absolutely everything that we think and in what we do as born-again Christians. If we don't acknowledge that we're not treating the Word of God nearly as seriously as we should, then we aren't ready to take care of the spiritual battle of the current affairs of the world. (coughs) Excuse me. I can now say that, yes, I have reached a point where I always put him first in my daily life. But, as I mentioned, that wasn't the case until more recently in my life. My eyes were open. Um... And I had knowledge, and I was seeking him, but not as diligently as I should have. It's like the good, um, you know, that expression, the ostrich that sticks its head in the sand. That's kind of like that kind of syndrome. Um, And I hate to say it, but our human nature is programmed. Like, literally, we have been programmed, okay? Okay. To avoid any kind of discomfort. We sure love those creature comforts, don't we? But by staying in that automatic drive mode of the life of the world, we avoid facing the reality of what we must all deal with. It's the purpose of our life here on earth. Think about this. In our Western culture, we really have had it pretty easy so far. I mean, as far as Christians are concerned, you know, compared to others in many other countries, like in terms of persecution and lifestyle, we're spoiled with our conveniences of life. We really are. I mean, think about this. Hot water on demand, clean drinking water, Grocery stores, vegetables and fruits that come from far away, out of season, stocked up, cars, shopping malls, unlimited internet and worldwide communication and connectivity. I mean, what a world do we live in? It's a world of abundance. And we have so much riches at our disposal that I believe that as born-again Christians and believers in Jesus Christ, that we're mentally and spiritually out of shape. If you're a believer, then you should know and understand that each one of us has been created by Yahweh, God, our Father, for this very specific moment in time. If you read the Bible, each one of the people in all the stories, these are all historical facts, they were in their time to complete certain tasks that Yahweh, God, would ask of them. It's no different in today's world. 
We are here, each one of us. We have a calling, and we have specific tasks to accomplish for Him. The Holy Spirit dwells in us, and the Holy Spirit communicates to us when we pay attention and listen. <clears throat> Excuse me. But we get distracted. We get complacent. Things are changing fast, and we must all be prepared spiritually and mentally for what is to come. The relative ease of life that we've been experiencing has been coddling us all for far too long. That our spiritual life is at the level of being a couch potato. We're out of shape. And we don't realize the seriousness of being unfit spiritually. We all talk about having that bikini, summer-ready body and, you know, exercising and everything. But even in that world of fitness that I used to be in, only the very most diligent people advanced and succeeded and accomplished their task. They were extremely diligent. But far more important than our physical health, although we do have to take good care of our body, it is a temple where the Holy Spirit resides. So we do need to feed it properly and take, it good, take good care of it and also rest. But spiritually... Boy, are we out of shape. Back on February 15th, I was praying that morning and I was laying in bed. And the Holy Spirit had uh, me put together a series of 10 images on slides from um, Luke chapter 8. And specifically, he requested verses 5 to 8 and then verses 11 to 15 and finally, verse 18. And I read them in one of my videos that week. So I'm not going to read them all here like this, but I recommend that you read them in your own Bible. But here's a quick recap. Verses 5 to 8 goes like this. And this is from the Amplified Bible. The sower went out to sow his seed. And as he sowed, some fell beside the road, and it was trampled underfoot. And the birds of the skies ate it up. <clears throat> and some seed fell on shallow soil, covering the rocks, and as soon as it sprouted, it withered away, because it had no moisture. Other seed fell among the thorns, and the thorns grew up with it and choked it out. And some fell into good soil, and grew up and produced a crop a hundred times great. <clears throat> Excuse me. As he said these things, he called out, He who has ears to hear, let him hear and heed my words. Verse 15. And this is key. But as for that seed in the good soil, these are the ones who have heard the word with a good and noble heart, and hold on to it, the word, tightly, and bear fruit with patience. And then in verse 18, Jesus warns, so be careful, and this is key, how you listen for whoever has a teachable heart, to him more understanding will be given. And whoever does not have a longing for truth, even what he thinks he has, will be taken away from him. So 
So after that, the Holy Spirit asked me to ask these questions to my online family and friends. And the questions that he asked, the question that he asked me was, where are your feet planted? Are you in good, healthy soil? Are you teachable? Are the scales off of your eyes? Are your ears open? Is your heart softened and open? Like the seed in good soil, are you willing to push through the ground to surface and absorb all that God has to feed you to become stronger and healthier spiritually and produce a hundredfold? Are you willing to do a spiritual zero to 5K race to get in stronger spiritual health by training for Yahweh God? Our abundant resources of life have turned us into spiritual couch potatoes, better known as recreational Christians. So now I need to ask you to think about these things. What do you idolize? Because I had to ask myself those things too. The comforts of life, your job or your business, people, public figures, family, friends, social media. Question for you. Can you stay completely offline for even just one single day a week? Answer truthfully. Better yet, put it to the test. <laughs> um, I have. Your vehicle. Your clothes. Your home. Your well-stocked pantry. Your party or social life your money. Does Yahweh God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit, and God's will, His will shall be done, come first above every single thing in your life? It's not likely. You know why I can say that? Remember about Sodom and Gomorrah? The main issue wasn't so much the depraved lifestyle that people were living. I mean, it's no different to what's going on here right now in the world. But it was about all of the idols that they had. In Ezekiel chapter 16, verse 49, I'm reading from the Amplified Bible here. Behold, this was the sin of your sister Sodom. She and her daughters, the outlying cities, had arrogance, abundant food, and careless ease. But she did not help the poor and needy. So they had pride, excess of food, and prosperous ease. What did God do? Yahweh destroyed them. So now, the question that each one of us needs to answer is, 
Are your feet planted in recreational Christianity or on holy ground? Thank you, Holy Spirit, for that question. It's time to get in top spiritual shape for what's coming. Yahweh is not joking, my friends. I invite you to take this message very seriously. I invite you to make sure and without the shadow of a doubt that you put Yahweh God, Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit first and foremost in your thoughts, in your heart, in your mind, in your soul, above absolutely everything else. It is critical in the times that we're living in right now. I'm not here to serve sugar and ice cream. My duty to God is to serve meat and to be salty. Because I didn't have that truth for years. And even after I became a born-again Christian about 11 years ago, I was still lost, but did not realize it. Please understand. And please make sure where your feet are planted, my friends. Have a good weekend. Pray about this. I'll see you next week. May God bless you.